Welcome to Altium Designer PCB Navigation. In this module, we will learn how to navigate around the PCB, both in the 2D and 3D viewing modes. Now that we've set up the basic preferences for the PCB, we should learn how to get around it. Just like with this schematic view, there are shortcut keys that are most helpful and aid in the efficiency of operations. Some of the same shortcuts exist between both the schematic view and the PCB. For example, using V and A to zoom in into a defined area, or VF to look at the entire board, or V and D to look at the entire document. There are extensive shortcuts possible in Altium. To get a full list, go to the Help drop-down menu and pick Shortcut Keys. This will open a web page, as you can see here, and you can browse to the shortcut listings and expand them to find the available shortcuts with their descriptions. Looking back at the regular PCB view, the right mouse button in the view allows for panning. Holding it down changes the pointer to a hand, allowing you to pan around in the view. The mouse wheel performs a number of movements depending on what keys are held or not held down. No keys pans up and down. Holding the shift key pans right and left. Holding the control key zooms in and out, as you can see. There are also a number of options available from the View pull-down menu. Again, note that there are underlined letters in the menus to act as a reminder to indicate shortcut key definitions like VA for the view area, as well as the others that you can see here. One of the really useful shortcuts is the Jump to Component. We mentioned this very briefly in the schematics, but it also works in the PCB. Hitting the J key followed by C opens up the component designator window where we can enter the reference designator for the component we want to jump to. Entering C3 and hitting return or OK, we jump to C3. Hovering the mouse over a track or a device pin causes the net associated with that track or pin to be highlighted. This can be helpful in tracing and understanding the routing for a particular net. Clicking on a track selects it, and while it's selected, tapping the tab key will first select the rest of the tracks on that layer, and then the second tab selects all the track on all the layers. Using the cross select mode, as we discussed in the schematic module, allows for selecting components in either the PCB or the schematic and having them highlight in both. We will not reshow that, but it does work. Altium Designer provides a 3D view and editing capacity in the PCB. To switch from 2D to 3D, hit the number 3 key. To go back to the 2D view, hit the number 2 key. In 3D mode, the same mouse pan and zoom options are available with one notable addition. If you hold the shift key down long enough, a 3D icon shows like this. Now you can rotate the 3D view using the right mouse by clicking on it within the 3D icon, either the arrows or somewhere within the icon, holding down that button and then moving the mouse to look at the PCB from the different perspectives. Hitting the zero key sets the view to zero degrees. Hitting 9 puts it to a 90 degree mode. Hitting the V and then B key flips the board view as if you're looking from the other side of the board. This works both in 2D and 3D viewing mode and shows the perspective of viewing the board from either side in the current viewing mode. A feature I use all the time is the single layer viewing mode that we looked at in the preferences. To enter into this viewing mode, hold the shift key down and click the S key. This will toggle through the available modes, as we have seen. It also works in 3D mode as well, although you can see the rotation icon appearing because we're holding the shift key down. Here you see the single layer mode toggling in 2D. While we have the single layer mode showing, it's a good time to illustrate an important concept, the active layer. The active layer is determined by which of the layer tabs at the bottom of the window is highlighted. We can now click on the various tabs to bring to the front in full view that selected layer graying out the others. Here's the bottom layer being made active. I often use this mode to aid in track placement as it allows me to better focus on the current routing layer but still see the others. Using the single layer feature allows for placement of vias with an understanding of the impact on the other layers of the PCB. Let's look at a new panel, the View Configuration panel. It's already showing, but if it wasn't, we could open it up from the Panels button. This panel has two main tabs, Layer Colors and View Options. 
The Layers and Colors tab provides us with a number of options for displaying the various layers of the PCB. The typical layers displayed would be signal and plane layers. For this PCB, there are two, top and bottom. Here, as with a number of Altium settings, we could change the color of the layers by clicking on the color square of the layer we wish to change. Doing so pops up a window with the color options. I generally don't recommend changing the basic signal color layers as this may cause confusion, but the option exists if needed. By clicking on the eye icon, we can hide the associated layer. Here we hide the top layer. This is one way to drive what is visible in the PCB view. You could also right click on the layer tabs at the bottom of the window and select the hide or highlight to hide or highlight that selected layer. If you right click in the layer tabs region, a menu will pop up allowing you to hide or show layers as well. This is one quick way to add a visible layer without opening up the view configuration panel. Now that we've looked at the layers, we will shift to the view options tab. Under the general settings, we see the 2D 3D option as well as the single layer viewing mode. Likewise, we can enable and disable the grid or change its color if we wanted to. Moving on to the object visibility settings, we can hide the objects by type, by putting them into draft mode, or change their transparency. Note with the current PCB, we have the polygons hidden because they cover so much. That's why the polygon eye icon was crossed out. If we want to unhide the polygons, we could simply click on the eye icon to toggle its visibility. Now you can see them. They weren't deleted, they're just not visible. I would encourage playing with these options to become familiar with them as they can help with the layout process by removing or hiding some objects as an aid. The polygon hiding is a typical use case. The dim and mask settings allow for the user to control how much is dimmed, highlighted, and masked. The additional options section provides control over a different set of features, allowing, for example, pad numbers to be or not be displayed. One thing that may be needed for your company's standards would be to rename a mechanical layer. Right-click on the layer name to pop up a menu with the edit option. Picking that, we can now change the layer name. If the name of a signal layer needs to be changed, that is done within the Layer Stack Manager. To access that, right-click on the Signal Layer entry and pick Layer Stack Manager. Now clicking on the name, we can change it. We won't commit the change to the signal layer at this point, but we could if we needed to. Note there are a number of other options here, adding a new mechanical layer or a component layer pair and deleting layers. One more thing, if during your PCB session when modifying the view configuration you get to a point where you can't find the layers for the PCB, open up the view configuration panel and left click on the layer sets pull down menu and then pick default. I've had more than one customer support call because they couldn't see the features or layers on their PCB picking a standard view often fix the problem. There is also some predefined configuration views that you could use. These are accessed under the View Options tab. Here we see that our current configuration is custom configuration. That is because we've been modifying layer visibility. To get back to a typical view, use the drop-down menu for the configuration and pick by left-clicking either 2D or 3D views. Here we can look at a couple of different views. This concludes Module 15, PCB Navigation, where we looked at getting around in the PCB along with configuring our view of the PCB. Please do Exercise 15, PCB Navigation.